Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are talking about vehicle-to-grid and bi-directional charging technology. These topics seem to have caught the attention of the Tesla community in particular this week. Then we have a couple other notes to go through on Tesla, as well as some news on the Mazda MX-30, which has begun production. All right, we'll start off with vehicle to grid. This has been a concept that's been explored for a long time. Some electric vehicles have actually had this capability. This just means using the energy stored in the battery pack of a vehicle to provide power to the grid or to your house, for example. This first caught a lot of attention with the Reuters article published last week that we had talked about, which had the title exclusive Tesla secret batteries aim to rework the math for electric cars and the grid. That article talked about Tesla's ambitions for a million mile powertrain, which would include a million mile battery pack. And the opening paragraph read that Tesla plans to, quote, allow EV batteries to have second and third lives in the electric power grid, end quote. So a lot of people seem to assume that this meant vehicle-to-grid technology. Reuters never said anything about vehicle-to-grid technology in this article. I suppose you could technically interpret having second and third lives in the electric power grid as a statement of multi-purpose functionality that might imply vehicle-to-grid, but to me, second and third lives is a serial concept. It's numbered list. It's part of a series. So my own interpretation of that was implying that after it was used for an electric vehicle, the battery pack could then be reused in the future for stationary storage. Now we'll talk a little bit more in a second about how that may have been an incorrect interpretation, but the overall point stands if it's not necessarily clear that they mean vehicle to grid. Anyway, that sparked an interest in the topic and Electric yesterday sort of fanned the flames of that by publishing an article titled, quote, Tesla quietly adds bidirectional charging capability for game-changing new features, end quote. So great, it looks like all the stars are lining up here and we will be set to go for vehicle-to-grid functionality here really soon if Tesla just added this feature. And hey, we just learned about AutoBidder 2 and Tesla is using that for energy trading on their utility-scale storage projects. So with Battery Day coming up, how could we not have vehicle-to-grid? Well, let's take a closer look at this because unfortunately it's not quite that clear-cut. The first area that I want to put caution around is assuming that this was a newly added feature by Tesla. This is not the case. If you look at the schematic that was shared with Electric by engineer Marco Gaxiola, who is a listener of the podcast, by the way, and had shared the same information with me, you can see that the Model 3 teardown that they did, where they found this bidirectional charging capability, was done back in August of 2018. So I think saying Tesla quietly added this feature is a mischaracterization because it looks like this has been in the Model 3 since inception. So all the hype around this technology this week in particular has been head-scratching for me, because we've actually known about this for a while. Jack Ricard discussed this last year on his EVTV YouTube channel from part of their Model 3 teardown. On one hand, this is extremely exciting because it does indicate there might be some potential for an over-the-air software update for current Model 3s to be capable of vehicle-to-grid functionality. But on the other hand, Tesla has seemingly had that capability for probably three years now, and they have yet to utilize it. So the sense of imminency that seems to have flared up this week around some of these reports doesn't make any more sense than it would have made last week or two weeks ago or a month ago or two months ago. There's nothing new here that means this is for sure happening. Yes, battery day is looming. Yes, there is a strong possibility that Tesla has a million mile battery ready to go at battery day or shortly thereafter. That sort of longevity makes vehicle to grid much more appealing and interesting. But yet again, we've known about the million mile powertrain goal for a long time. And even with AutoBidder, we've known about that for a year too. And while there is a fair possibility that Tesla announces vehicle to grid at battery day based on having a million mile pack, well, that doesn't really explain why they had this functionality in the Model 3 from the start. Tesla has been asked about vehicle to grid many, many times across their history. If we go back to 2016, JB Straubel, Tesla's chief technology officer at the time, was asked this question directly in a question saying, would Tesla customers, quote, actually become electricity traders using their car as the bank, end quote. JB responded by saying there's two ways you can sort of implement something like that. The first is dynamic charging, so programming the car to charge when electricity rates are lower. He said that was easy, it makes sense to do it, but then in terms of sending electricity back into the grid, he said, quote, if we want to actually send energy back from the car to the electricity grid, this gets much more complex, and that's something that I don't see being a very economic or viable solution perhaps ever, but certainly not in the near term, end quote. He cited two main reasons for this. The first was wear and tear and degradation. He says that has a fairly high cost that is often not considered when thinking about vehicle to grid technology. That of course could be addressed by a million mile battery, but you still have the opportunity cost of whether it's better to use that energy to move the vehicle around for a million miles or to use those cycles on the grid. And I don't think that's as clear cut as people like to make it, even though that million miles does sound like a lot. Then of course, autonomy throws another wrench in that equation. So anyway, that was reason number one. The second main reason was the interconnection cost. When you have a battery and you're hooking it up to the grid, there are regulations that come along with that. 
And when you start getting into that territory, things can be pretty complicated. And that has held Tesla back in the past. That doesn't mean that won't change in the future. But even when Tesla has shipped stationary storage, they have made these comments about vehicle to grid and the regulations being challenging. The logical counterpoint here is, okay, Rob, that was back in 2016. That doesn't necessarily matter anymore. I agree, but that's where I want to bring this back to the timeline because we know that the Model 3, which started production in July of 2017, has this bi-directional charging. JB Straubel said this in 2016. At that point in time, this decision for bi-directional charging in the Model 3 had probably already been made. It's possible that it hadn't been made, but that would have required a very dramatic flip from JB in the span of just a few months. So my overall point there is that the presence of this doesn't automatically mean vehicle to grid is imminent. What else would it be for? Well, I don't know. Maybe they just put it in there though, just in case. The other thing I want to discuss here is Elon Musk's comments on this topic. He was asked the same question pretty much directly on the Solar City acquisition call. So this was back in June of 2016 and analyst Joseph Spock asked if they would consider allowing vehicle to grid support. Elon replied by saying, quote, I think we've debated this since the early days of the Roadster. I mean, very early proto roadsters that we had would do vehicle to grid, but you do get a lot of complications with that if you backflow power through the car into the wall. You know, like when is the car allowed to do that? When is it not? And then how much you allow the car battery to be drawn down, and then people will be pretty upset, I think, if the lights are on in the house, but they can't drive their car because all the power in the house shuts down. So I think the right solution is to decouple it into vehicle, stationary battery, and solar." End quote. So again, these comments were made during the Model 3 development, and it's possible that Tesla was just saying this to not hurt sales of Powerwall until they were ready for vehicle to grid to happen. But that hasn't really been the style of JB and Elon Musk over the years. They're usually pretty open about where they see things heading. Again, though, these are old comments. That's a fair criticism. I still think it's worth considering the context of the timeline. But we have heard more recently from Elon back in July of 2018 on Twitter in response to a similar question saying, quote, Very early on, we had the ability to use the car as a battery outputting power. Maybe worth revisiting that, end quote. Again, this teardown from Marco that Electrek is reporting on was done in August of 2018, so it would have been a month and a half after these comments. Maybe they just quickly implemented that bidirectionality at that point after reconsidering. All right, so at this point, it probably sounds like I'm very against vehicle to grid technology. That's not the point at all. There's gonna be tens of gigawatt hours out there on the road, Tesla shipping that annually. Soon enough, it'll be 100 gigawatt hours. Soon enough, it'll be terawatt hours out there rolling around. So if Tesla could get more functionality, more value out of that, that would obviously be awesome and really, really exciting in terms of the potential. My only point here is to provide some caution around the feeling that this is an imminent thing based on some of the sentiment that seems to be grabbing hold this week. I think there's a decent shot they talk about it at battery day, but I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. The last thing I will say on this is that Sandy Monroe, who's been doing the Model Y teardown, did respond to an email from a listener that I was CC'd on on this topic and whether or not bidirectionality would be included for Model Y. He says that they found the same parts and signs on circuit boards indicating bidirectional charging potential for the Model Y. And he said that the short answer was that they reached out to Tesla and Tesla did say that they are planning to do bidirectional charging. I do suppose that that doesn't technically mean a vehicle to grid though. You could potentially link up with another vehicle, say another vehicle ran out of battery, you could help them out. All right, next up, a couple quick hitters here. First is that Tesla has dropped their lawsuit against Alameda County. No surprise there, as the county has now fallen in line with the state governance around manufacturing, but nice to have the finality around that drama. Next, we have news on the Long Range Model 3 in China. A few days ago, we talked about how that had started production officially in Shanghai. We now have news from Jay in Shanghai on Twitter that deliveries for that Long Range vehicle have now commenced. Lastly today, I wanted to briefly talk about Mazda's first electric vehicle, the Mazda MX-30. This is a small crossover SUV. Yesterday, Mazda announced that they have started production of the MX-30, so I wanted to talk about it briefly. This is not going to be any sort of threat to Tesla. The MX-30 has a 35.5 kilowatt hour battery, and they are saying that on the WLTP test cycle, this will have a driving range of approximately 200 kilometers. Every vehicle converts differently from WLTP to the EPA test cycle. My general rule is to divide by 1.12. That gets you 178 kilometers as an estimate for EPA, and that converts over to only about 111 miles of range. So obviously that's gonna be a non-starter for many people. This vehicle is supposed to start around $35,000. So poor value, low efficiency, that's about three miles per kilowatt hour versus the Model Y above four. So the Model Y is about 35% more efficient, even while carrying the weight of about two times the amount of batteries. Honestly, not sure how Mazda plans to sell any of these. It's disappointing, but not all that surprising. 
That will do it for today though. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Thursday, May 21st episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you. Thank you.